mostly people think that Bhagavad Gita has many yogas. Especially the discussion, the deliberation, the argumentation has been on three yogas. Bhakti Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Dharma Yoga. The Yoga of Devotion, the de Yoga of Knowledge and the Yoga of Action. But if you see closely, Bhagavad Gita has only one yoga and that is the yoga of action, that is Karma Yoga. In fact, so many books, so many translations have been published and written by people and everybody has given his or her own views. And this has become a big problem. So the real Bhagavad Yoga, whatever it is, has disappeared. Actually, there is just one yoga in Bhagavad Gita and that is Karma Yoga, Action Yoga. Bhakti Yoga and Jnana Yoga are just the manifestations to it. Like how the karma, how the action should be performed, this is very, very important and this must be known then only you would be able to understand the real meaning of Bhagavad Gita. The action should be performed incorporating Bhakti Yoga and Jnana Yoga. The Karma Yoga, that is Action Yoga, should have Bhakti Yoga in the way that every action should be devoted to the God Almighty. You aren't able to do anything until and unless you are dictated by God. Everything is dictated by God. Even a leaf or anything in this world, nothing can work. Not even we can breathe or take another step forward. So believing that everything that I'm doing is for God and it is being done because of God is Bhakti Yoga. So every karma becomes bhakti yoga. Every karma yoga becomes bhakti yoga. And to submit every result to God and just doing one's karma or one's work with all devotion without caring about the fruits is jnana yoga. Because one should know and it's, it's real that howsoever, howsoever we want, but the results will be according to what the God has decided for us. We can't decide the results. Now let us come to seven main shlokas of yoga and Bhagavad Gita that sums up the entire Bhagavad Gita. Entire Bhagavad Gita. If you understand these seven shlokas, the entire Bhagavad Gita, its essence, will come out and you will understand it. The first one is, listen to your conscience. Your conscience is very important. Listening to your conscience is listening to God because God resides in you in form of conscience. Yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharat abhyutthanam adharmasya tadatmanam srijamyaham Lord Sri Krishna says, whenever there is a decline in righteousness and increase in unrighteousness, O Arjuna, at that time I manifest myself. This manifestation is always there. It is inside us. Have you ever noticed whenever you're working or planning to do something or you get up for an action, if it is unworthy, if it is bad, there's a voice that comes from inside you, tries to stop we, we all, but we tend to neglect it. We neglect the voice of God and that takes us to sin and to unrighteousness. So God is always there, always, but we at times ignore. The second main shloka is, 
नयनम छिंदंति शस्त्राणी नयनम दहति पावक न चयनम क्ले दे अंत्यागो न शोषे यदि मारुता कृष्ण से वेपन्स कैन नॉट शेड द सोल नॉर कैन फायर बर्न इट वाटर कैन नॉट वेट इट नॉर द विंड कैन ड्राई इट एंड वेन नथिंग कैन किल द आत्मन नथिंग कैन एनहीट द आत्मन दैट इज द ओनली परमानेंस द बॉडी इज टेम्पोरेरी देन वाई टू फियर द सेकेंड लेसन वी गेट फ्रॉम भगवत गीता इज टू बी फियरलेस वट एवर एक्शन वी आर डूइंग इफ इट इज राइट इज बी फियरलेस डोंट वरी वॉट द वर्ल्ड इज सेंग डोंट वरी वॉट द सोसाइटी इज सेंग डोंट वरी हाउ द पीपल आर स्टॉपिंग यू स्टॉप वरिंग एंड जस्ट इन द नेम ऑफ गॉड ईश्वर परिनिधान सबमिट एवरीथिंग टू गॉड एंड just go ahead be fearless the third and very important shloka is akam karma karmanne vadhikaraste ma phaleshu kadachara ma karam phal he durbhu matri sangost karmani krishna says o arjuna you have a right to perform your prescribed duties but you are not entitled to the fruits of your action because you can't aim for action you can just aim to stand up the action ishwar parinidhan will be performed in the way god wants and the result will also be given by god so if you are worrying about the result you cannot do the work you cannot take action you're just worrying about the result the result wasn't is and will never be in our hands it was is and will ever be in the hands of the god almighty and thus our only duty is to perform our function never 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 consider yourself to be the cause of the result of your activities don't be attached to action or inaction you should only do work and then the result is in god's hand the fourth live in divinity live in divinity always paritranaay sadhunam vinashikaay cha dushkritan dhan sansthap na thaye sambhavani yuge yuge krishna says o arjuna whenever there is a decline in righteousness and increase in unrighteousness i manifest myself so when i am living in divinity when you are living in divinity when everyone is living in divinity there's no need to fear because if we are on the right path if we are in the right track doing the righteous actions then why fear god is there to save us the next one is also very important it tells you how the senses play a vital role in making you sorrowful or happy madras parshastu konteya shitoshnu sukh dukhada agma paino nitya stanti tikshasu bharata krishna says o arjun no son of kunti the contact between the senses and the sense objects give rise to the fleeting perceptions of happiness and distress these are non permanent they come and go like the winter and summer seasons so o descendant of bharat o arjun o partha one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed if day is there the night has to come if luster is there then sorrow has to come this world is dynamic the nature keeps changing so we have to accept whatever is coming we have to accept and again comes ishwar parinidhan whatever god has given us whatever way god keeps us we shall remain contented because if today there is sorrow the next moment there will be happiness if now it's sunlight the darkness has to come and then again the darkness will be taken away by the sunlight so as the winter and summer seasons come don't worry the time will change for better the next one is 
Krishna talk about the three foes, the three enemies, the bitterest enemies any human being can have and stay away from them. Lord Krishna says, Trividham narksyedam dwaram nashmatmanah kamah krodhasta lobhast smadetriyam tyajjet There are three gates leading to the hell of self-destruction for the soul. And these are lust, anger and greed. Therefore, all should abandon these three. Tyajjet, smadetriyam tyajjet. Leave it, abandon it. Leave, leave, leave these three or your life will become hell. Kama, krodhast, lobhast, lust, anger and greed. Lord Krishna again in the next sloka talks about your mind. Our mind, how it can be the best friend and how it can be the bitterest of enemies. Krishna says, Uddharedatma natmanam natmanam vasadayet atmaiv hamatmano bandhuratmaiv dripuratmana. Krishna says, elevate yourself, O Arjuna, just elevate yourself through the power of your mind and not degrade yourself for the mind can be your best friend and also your bitterest enemy the mind should be a slave not your master if you let your mind become your master it will dictate you and your life will become a hell but if it is your slave you are able to control your mind you're able to keep control on your senses you're able to control your a voice and words and reaction and responses then the life will be great if you let your mind control you then you become its slave and if you control your mind then you become the master so that was I tried to sum up Bhagavad Gita in these few shlokas this is the essence of Bhagavad Gita and ultimately what comes is the karma you don't have to be great to start. Remember, you don't have to be great to start. You have to start to become great. So karma is most important. Most of the people keep on thinking and thinking and thinking and dreaming and dreaming, but never take action. So they never reach anywhere. Lord Krishna says, take action. Take action, righteous action, and I will bestow my blessings on you. The success will come to you. Happiness will come to you. Bliss will come to you. Nirvana will come to you. And soon you'll be enlightened knowing that we can only have control on karmas. We don't have control on its results. So, arise, awake, and stop not till the goal is achieved. And remember, if it is righteous, if your actions are righteous, if your aim is good and your performance is divine, then you will get, always get the desired result. Always get the desired result. Om Shri Krishna. Namaskar.